Okay guys, welcome back to our world outdoors. So there's been a lot of talk in the Facebook groups um, about solar chargers, solar battery banks, and other things. So first I want to just go over it real quick. The problem you have with solar chargers and especially these small solar uh, battery banks is they do work, but for one, just as an example, this one, when it's completely empty, has to be sitting in full sun for about eight hours to fully charge. Okay, that's full sun. Because if you cover even one of these cells, then you pretty much kill the power intake to all of them because they're wired in series. Okay? Now, I'm not going to get real deep into this. Um, I have solar on my house, and I've built plenty of systems. But if they're running parallel, basically, when you get some shading, it doesn't hurt it that bad. But if they're running series, as in like, like a remote, basically. Instead of like jumper cables is parallel. It's plus to plus, minus to minus, and you just connect it that way. So when one's cut off, it doesn't hurt it. But in series, like a remote control where you put plus to minus, it does. So if I cover this, I reduce the use of all of this. Now, like I said, about eight hours in full sun for this to charge completely up from nothing. Now, if you strap it to the outside of your pack and you're hiking the PCT in eight hours or ten hours, it probably will be full. I mean, it very well could be. But if you're on the Appalachian Trail, it won't be because you're mostly in, you know, the green canopy. You might be hitting bits of light as you go. Now, these do have their uses. Not only do they work as a regular battery bank, so you charge it before you leave. <clears throat> but let's say that I fell down a crevice and my ankle was caught and my phone was dead. If I could push this out to even get some ambient light, it would charge it up enough that I could put enough of my phone to call after a period of time. So as a backup, this is, this is great insurance. I do not blame anyone for getting one of these because it's great insurance. It's really not that much weight, honestly. Now, <clears throat> this one here is the move power, and I'll be honest, this is 10,000 ma black web. This tries to say it's 30,000. Okay, it's not 30,000. I don't care what it says. And it's got a 1.5 watt solar panel, which actually is correct. Now, you see this thing has just been beat to death. It literally has. I've had this thing for years. Um, I got it off eBay for like eight bucks, I think. Um, you can get them on Wish now for like five bucks. I mean, this older style like this is cheap. The newer style has lithium. I believe this one's NICAD, but it's hard to tell without taking it apart. I'll be honest, though. It kind of makes me think it is lithium, though, because it does survive well in the cold. I don't, I don't know why. If it was NICAD, it'd probably drop dead real easy. But, <clears throat> so, with the actual solar chargers, they work pretty good um, if you're, like, stopped at camp and you need to get a few hours. But the higher wattage, the faster and better it's going to charge. So I don't know if you guys have seen the bigger Go Power ones where it's like four panels that fold out. Those ones are a name brand one. So if you've got something like an iPhone or anything that's Apple or iPhone, you need one of the good name brand ones because they have a very picky power supply. So you can't just plug it into any old one and it's going to charge an iPhone. But if you get the ones that are 35 or 50 watts, then you're going to be doing good. You know, pull it out at camp, last couple hours, get what light you can, and charge up whatever you've got. Personally, I don't use one of those. We use these two. This is what we take. These are, this one's we use for our phones, just to top off our phones, which most times we're in places that don't have service anyways. This one generally is a backup if we need our phones. But I also generally plug my GoPro batteries into this, or the phone that I'm filming on right now, I'll plug into this to keep it charged for our camera work. And sometimes if it's like a one day trip, I may even edit and have this plugged in to the phone while I edit. 
But that's what we basically take because we don't have a lot of power needs when we're out in trucks. Most times there's no service anyways. You might find me up late at night because um, I have insomnia real bad. So I'll download movies to my phone and be up watching late at night. But I have it on battery saver mode when I do it so it uses almost nothing. The <clears throat> other thing I want to tell you about these is this one in particular some of them you see where it says power on off so I have to push this when I plug something in to get it to start charging so it won't charge the phone or whatever I plugged into it until I push that button and usually it only runs for an X amount of time like 30 minutes I think it is and then you have to push the button again that's just on this move power one I don't the rest of mine I've never seen one like that now you can charge it with a regular Android phone charger it's got a one amp out and a two amp out so if you got like a tablet or something you need to charge it up faster now how you know this one's working I've seen most of the other ones that work like this too I'm going to put it let's see if I can do this hold on I'm going to have to move the phone. Alright, hold on a second and I'll get it set up so you can see it charging. Okay, so we're going to put it next to this light source. And then you can see it instantly comes on. And it's trying to top it off, see? So it will use any kind of light source as long as it's close enough. But as soon as I take it too far away, see, it starts to slow down and stop like that and then when you see it's real finicky super finicky and all solar chargers are this way so if you think you're just gonna strap this to your pack and you're gonna have unlimited power if you're on the east coast or you're going through any kind of forest or anything it's not gonna happen so don't be tricked into blowing a bunch of money and don't spend a bunch of money on these I mean I'm gonna be honest with you I spent like eight bucks or something stupid on this with free shipping that was a deal I've seen ones that are like this that you know maybe look a little newer and sleeker but they're essentially the same thing for like 30 bucks don't don't pay that that's dumb go get them off somewhere like Amazon or wish or you know order them direct from China or whatever because they're basically the same thing you can get them for a quarter of the price they all work the exact same then like I said this is for emergencies we do fill it before we go out and then yes if I'm if we're like summoning up something or if we're gonna be hiking for example if I was out at Dolly Sods I would strap this to the outside of the pack now when I get to camp I do I take it I put it on a, you know, if there's a picnic table or a stump or a tree and there's light blowing on it, I put that sucker in it. Yeah, let's, let's top it off. Why not? It doesn't cost us anything. But don't expect this sitting in late evening light to be completely charged up in an hour and be able to run all your equipment all night. It's not going to do that. You got to understand its limitations. I really think that it's a wonderful backup, you know. If, if you're in a bad situation, this these things are awesome. And if I was like through hiking the Appalachian Trail, would I take this with me? Yeah, I would. Anytime I was at camp, I'd leave it out. Or if I could hook it to the top of my backpack somehow. I've actually seen guys put Velcro on the backs and stick them on top of their hats. You know, so they're getting light, and whenever they walk by, it gets a little bit of light. Even ambient light will charge this. I've actually had it sitting inside my house, where the window wasn't shooting light directly on it, but the window was lighting up the house, and after about 18 hours, this was all the way charged up. So it does work with ambient light. It will help. But uh, it's just one of those things where people expect too much out of these, and I hear people talking about it in the groups, and you know wanting more information and I try to give out as much information as I can without like dashing their hopes of what they're wanting to do 
And also, I, I want to say something now because people seem to not even realize it. There, oh, every phone has some sort of battery savior option. If you turn that on, and like my Samsung actually has like four stages of battery saving mode. If you're out in the outback, you don't need your phone to be playing in 4K. You know, it's, it's, you don't need it. So turn your battery saver mode on, and you're going to have... So I do recommend these. Just don't pay insane amounts for them, and don't expect miracles out of them. They're, they're good products if you use them correctly, and don't expect too much out of them. And also, if you can keep from covering them in any way, shape, or form when you attach them to something or have them lash to something, they will last much longer and fill up much faster. But until next time, I'm Tony with Our World Outdoors, and we'll see you.